it's 5.30 in the morning. In the red dunes of the Kalahari, I'm sitting in a hide overlooking a beautiful waterhole. And the reason I'm here is to capture the flight of the sand grouse as they come in to drink about two hours after sunrise. Now these birds flock together sometimes in thousands, but at the moment in hundreds. And the reason they flock is because Lana falcons swoop in and take them on the wing. Now, I'm not really likely to capture that event, although I'd love to. What I'm actually going to photograph using this shorter lens, this lighter lens, is the birds as they take off in groups and fly out in that direction into the wind. And in order to do that, I'm going to swing through the shot. I'm going to use a shallow depth of field, hopefully using one of these ND filters, just so I can shallow that depth of field while keeping the shutter speed quite short because I want some wing blur as the birds fly through. And as I swing through the shot, I'm not going to use manual focus. I'm going to pre-focus on the ground where I think the birds are generally flying out. And as they come into focus while I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'm going to press the shutter button. Now, this kind of photography inevitably means that you're going to lose a lot of shots. You might get one, two, three keepers if you're lucky, but those keepers just might be spectacular. This morning has been pretty hectic. I came here quite early to catch the sand grouse come down to drink at around 7.30, but they didn't come. It took them another hour to pluck up the courage to land at the waterhole. And that was because there was a hunting ladder falcon swooping in and trying to take a bird on the wing. And what an exciting morning it was. Instead of that artistic shot of a sand grouse that I initially came to look for, with the blurred wings and the specks of water falling from its feet as it takes off. I became obsessed with trying to photograph this lana hunting. And I did manage to get a couple of shots, but nothing spectacular, unfortunately, but just watching it swoop in at 200 plus kilometers an hour, attempting to take a sand grouse from the chaos as the, the birds erupt from the water hole was just extraordinary. It gave about four to five passes uh, in total and it must have caught a bird out of sight somewhere because it stopped coming and then the sand grouse landed. So to capture that shot I tried a few different techniques. I tried dialing out the focal length to as much as 150 millimeters and what that does is expands the field of view, makes it easier to track the bird at the same time is increasing the depth of field available to me. And that seemed to work a little, the idea being that you'd crop in later in post. And then I tried to capture it dialed in to 400 mil to try and get the bird in the frame, but that obviously was extraordinarily difficult for the autofocus on this 7D Mark II. So it's been an exciting time here at the waterhole. Really, really, really good morning. We try to find a way in life to give our hearts and soul a peace of mind. But you just wanna drink your wine and grab the glass and let it go down. Mm -hmm. But I can't hold you any longer. I can't cope cause you're a storm. I wake up feeling even smaller, even when the storm is over. Was it all in my head? Did we 
tried her hard and lost it all instead Was it all on me? Oh, you back away so far I couldn't see How far you drifted away It's about one in the afternoon and this waterhole is famous for the battleurs uh, that come in and drink it around this time. So there's a whole heap of cars waiting for that event to take place. Now there were four overhead earlier but they've all settled into trees nearby and they take a long time to make their mind up to come in to have a drink. So we're waiting for that to happen. Now I've positioned myself here uh, for several reasons. One, the battlers like to take off in this direction generally or in this direction. There's not much of a breeze so it can change. The other reason I'm positioned here is there's a wide sweep of open space from right to left and that'll blur out my background to an extent. If I was to move over there I'd be photographing into a set of trees and also all of the cars that are lined up on that set of trees would show in my background. Bright white cars which won't look nice. At least with the sand and the trees in the shot it's a natural looking shot. So the way you know these birds are coming in is you start to see shadows on the ground whizzing past. Huge shadows. The bigger they are the closer they are to the ground. And it gets very exciting as they come in. It's like it's like you're sitting on the bottom of the ocean looking up at circling sharks. It's a fantastic feeling to see these birds. Shadows fly by round and round, closer and closer, until finally they come in and land with their wings spread and talons out. I made an old man. Story. He took out an open and wrote something for me. Then he kept walking on down the road, and I watched him disappear. seen a ghost and I look down at what he wrote Both three and a half hours later and Battler Fest is at an end sort of because there are probably going to be more birds coming down but having been out on the road since uh, what 6 a.m. this morning anyway at the end of that I discovered that it was easier to use the big 428 on the full frame camera and uh, use the gimbal and I was able to get some nice swinging shots as the birds came into land and also as they took off and the positioning was okay but what I also found was uh, if I'd been on the north side of the bird they actually um, finish bathing and then display with their wings spread well, not display, they dry their wings facing the sun, which is in the north because we're in the southern hemisphere. So if I'd been around under the trees there, I would have been able to get some of those shots. But all in all, I think I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the shots that we got because uh, we got a lot of passes, a lot of battlers coming in and taking off, and even some interaction with some oryx at the waterhole. But at the end of the day, this bigger lens the 400, the wider field of view with the full frame camera really helped with those takeoffs and landings and particularly blurring the background. I think it made the shots more artistic. It's time to go. It's time to go. I pray he reads what's on the wall. It takes to heart what I wrote. I said, son, when you grow up, Looking for
for the year.